I think there's a misperception right now that mm -hmm. uh, people have Moore's curse. They believe that Moore's law has continued so fast that technology is going to accelerate and that a few years they're going to have on par and maybe even surpass human capabilities. I don't believe that. My name is Ken Goldberg. I'm a professor of engineering here at UC Berkeley. I think we're at a very interesting moment for robotics. It's a there is a huge amount of new technologies coming out. I think that in terms of sensing, we have 3D sensors, we have advances in in cameras. The the, the really two of the most exciting areas are one is in computation, being able to do computing at very vast scales. So you, deep learning has made major advances in computer vision and speech recognition, and we believe it has that kind of potential in robotics. The other one is the cloud, that we have enormous leverage by being able to do the, have to store memory and do computation remotely and share information among multiple robots. So we're very excited about that potential, we're really starting to think of robots not as a single isolated island self-contained, but as a, a system that's connected with lots of other robots so they can share information and learn over time. We're going to have plenty of opportunity. We're going to need humans for for being creative, for being uh, for being sensitive, for for having all kinds of nuanced interactions with the world. But what's interesting is where you can start putting the two together. So you have humans essentially teaching robots, and one new idea that we're kind of interested in is where robots can teach humans. For example, to be um, safer drivers or uh, more energy efficient drivers, and the same for surgeons, right? So we're talking about um, the idea that surgeons, right? There's a lot of difference in skills. So how can you have um, the best surgeons, essentially, their motions recorded in such a way that they can help guide new surgeons, but not replace either the, the old or the new surgeons? This whole talk about the singularity is, is, is actually uh, negative because it, it, it alienates a lot of people, it causes a lot of anxiety. Even something like autopilot has been around for 30 years. There's still pilots in the cockpit. So I think we're going to have drivers in cars for a long time. And I think what we're going to have is more and more sophisticated driver assist tools that will help us drive when we're distracted and maybe even take a nap during a drive. That's okay, but I don't think we'll have to eliminate drivers. I think they're going to be very important. So I think that there's um, there are very important differences, and they're subtle, they go very deep. We're a product of m millions of years of evolution. So to expect the engineers are going to be able to basically, you know, recapitulate that in very short order is not, is not realistic. We're making progress, but it's just, it's a, it's a steady progress, but it's not as rapid as I think it's been promoted in the press. We have a new way of thinking about it. We call it the multiplicity. Okay. Yeah, and the multiplicity is the idea that rather than one monolithic, you know, artificial intelligence that's going to surpass and take over and essentially eliminate humans, that what's much more exciting is to think about groups of machines and groups of humans working together. And those combinations is something that's not really well understood. How do we bring the best groups of people together and basically combine their skills in the best possible way? And the same for algorithms. Ensemble systems are actually known to be more effective than a single system. Can we start thinking about a science of this kind of multiplicity that can then, that I think has got enormous potential, and in some sense we're already doing that, but how can we do that better? I think there's a huge amount of research and interesting questions in that direction.